Good evening, Alon. Welcome. You are with the news today. This is your prime time destination news. Newsmakers talking points. The big talking point tonight is there now simply an open door policy for all in the NDA Parivar. More and more allies set to join the Modi government. Is this Char so far a myth or reality? Also, the world is facing a climate emergency. 2023 hottest day. We'll have the World Meteorological Organization report for you tonight on the news today. But first, as always, it's time for the nine headlines at nine. The BJP ramps up its hunt for allies, seals a deal with the PMK in Tamil Nadu. Raj Thakre meets Amit Shah in Delhi amid speculation that there could be a tie-up there. Talks with Akalis to resume on 22nd March. Battle over Sharad Pawar's bastion Baramati intensifies. Supriya Sule faces a poll challenge from Ajit Pawar's wife, Sunetra. Ajit Pawar's brother tells India today he will campaign for Sule. High-stake contest unfolds. Pashupati Paras quits the NDA-led cabinet in Bihar a day after a seat snub. Rival Chirag Paswan's camp got five Bihar seats. Pashupati says it's a grave injustice, may switch sides. Supreme Court comes down heavily on yoga guru Baba Ramdev's Patanjali Ayurved issues a summon to Ramdev and MD Acharya Balakrishna to re respond to contempt proceedings over alleged misleading acts. Delhi Chief Minister KG Wal approaches the High Court, challenges all nine ED summons against him, calls them illegal. Union Minister Shobha Karan Laje provokes on on Bengaluru Cafe Blast says people from Tamil Nadu planted the bomb. Chief Minister Stalin demands action against her, calls her comments reckless. No immediate stay on the Citizenship Amendment Act notification by the Supreme Court issues notice to centre to respond to all petitions challenging CAA by April 9. Climate change alarm bells ring across the world. The World Meteorological Organization declares 2023 as the hottest year on record, says climate change indicators have surpassed record levels. And a controversy over Zomato's pure veg fleet for customers who follow a 100% vegetarian diet. Congress MP Karthi Chidambaram calls the move regressive and discriminatory. To the big breaking story at this moment, the Congress's Central Election Committee has met a short while ago to decide on candidates for the Lok Sabha elections and sources now saying Congress has deferred that big decision on Amethi and Rai Bareli, whether the Gandhis will contest from there. Sources now telling India today Rahul Gandhi has skipped the Central Election Committee meeting yet again. Uncertainty therefore growing on Rahul Gandhi, Priyanka Gandhi, Vadra fighting from UP in what were the traditional family bastions. Sources saying the Congress has decided 50 seats across eight states, but Uttar Pradesh has been deferred yet again. So uncertainty growing over whether Rahul Gandhi will actually contest from Amethi this time against Smriti Irani or whether Priyanka Gandhi, Vadra will contest at all. Rahul Gautam joins us. Rahul. Uncertainty over Rahul Gandhi contesting from Amethi still question mark over Priyanka Gandhi Vadra entering the electoral fray from Rai Bareli. Many other senior uh, Congress leaders we are told refusing to contest, Chief Minister, Deputy Chief Ministers. What's the sense you are picking up? <clears throat> Absolutely, uh, uh, Rajdeep. Uh, suspense is looming large uh, over Amethi and Rai Bareli and whether Rahul Gandhi and Priyanka Gandhi will be contesting uh, from their traditional turf or not. And uh, given the fact that many uh, top leaders of Congress party are refusing uh, and, uh, to contest and, and are not keen uh, uh, you know, on contesting uh, these Lok Sabha elections, this is only adding to the woes as far as Congress party is concerned. We all know that Rahul Gandhi's candidature has been announced for Vayanar. So one can say that Vayanar is a primary seat uh, for Rahul Gandhi, even if uh, Amethi is announced for him. And this is what is making, uh, you know, many uh, Congress leaders, uh, you know, worried about the Lok Sabha election. They, uh, they, there is sense among Congress workers that this will not motivate or encourage uh, Congress workers, given the fact that at least four uh, chief, former chief ministers, namely Ashok Gelo, Dick Vijay Singh, Kamal Nath, Harish Rawat are not keen, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, for Lok Sabha polls. Similarly, two former Deputy Chief Ministers, Sachin Pilot, T.S. Singh Dev, many former MPs, many uh, ex-ministers are not keen. Either they want tickets for their family members or uh, they uh, they are not uh, uh, right. uh, you know keen on contesting. This only is adding to woes given the fact that there is suspense on Rahul Gandhi and Priyanka Gandhi as well. And one, uh, as many are saying that uh, if uh, you know, uh, one of the Gandhi, uh, uh, one of the Gandhis would not contest uh, from northern part. It would be as good as giving walkover to BJP, and this will only give credence to the claims uh, or allegations of the BJP that uh, Congress is now confined only to southern part of the country. So that's the big question. Uh, CSC just got over. Uh, Fifty names have been cleared. Uh, you know, from eight seat, uh, from eight seat, but still UP uh, is not part of the third list, which will be issued. Right. Uh, late night or tomorrow morning and this is has become a concerning uh, thing or issue uh, for Congress leaders especially for Congress workers right in the northern part of the country okay we'll wait and see whether uh, uh, that certainty ends sooner rather than later but clearly the Congress still uh, battling over seat allocation especially for the state of Uttar Pradesh uh, while that is happening the BJP is going about trying to round up as many allies it can get Alliance shopping is what it's being called as the Lok Sabha polls near. In Tamil Nadu today, the PMK officially sealed a deal to join the NDA fold when the Prime Minister was in that part of the country. In Maharashtra, MNS Chief Raj Thakre appears set to join hands with the alliance. He met with uh, Home Minister Amit Shah in the national capital. The only concern in Bihar where Pashupati Paras, Union Minister, has resigned while in Karnataka, the JDS is reportedly unhappy over some of the seats it is being given there. So, is the NDA really confident of this Charso par? Is that myth or reality? Why this alliance shopping? That's going to be our top focus. Take a look. Setting their sights on a third consecutive electoral win, BJP is actively forming alliances, welcoming both new and former partners into the NDA. On Tuesday, the BJP finalized its alliance with the PMK in Tamil Nadu for the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. <laughs> Pantali Makal Kachi, Desi Janaya Kutirin, Terde, Variginda, Terdele, Potida, Mudi with Hidrikir, Brother Modi, our head, Nalachi Todare, Tamil Natil, Matrangal, Nangal in the Mudiway Editor Syndrome. Meanwhile, expelled AIA DMK coordinator and former Tamil Nadu Chief Minister O Paneer Selvam was seen pulling a golden chariot as a form of prayer for Prime Minister Modi's good health and victory. MNS leader Raj Thakre met Union Minister Amit Shah, hinting at a possible alliance for the Lok Sabha elections in Maharashtra. Negotiations for seat sharing are ongoing between the JDS and the BJP for the Lok Sabha elections in Karnataka. We have clearly stated we have clarity because this is a nation election, this is a national election. So we are not being greedy, we are a regional party and uh, we need to gain respect among our party workers also. But we want this alliance to be very healthy. We don't want a repeat of 2019 which happened with Congress because this is more of a natural alliance when it comes to the ground. The BJP, the Telugu Desam Party and the Jan Sena Party have joined forces to contest the Lok Sabha and Andhra Pradesh Assembly elections together. Nitish Kumar has already rejoined the NDA from Bihar. A political maneuvering aimed at achieving the ambitious target of 400 plus seats for the NDA. Bureau Report, India Today. So is there an open door policy for now for everyone within the NDA Parivar? Sign of nervousness or total domination? Char so par, is it a myth or is it reality? 
Joining me now, Sanjay Kumar is co-director, Lokniti CSTS and leading psychologist. Salman Sos is Congress's spokesperson. Ajay Alok, BJP spokesperson, both national spokespersons of their party. Appreciate all of you joining us. Before I come to uh, the debate, I just want to play for all three of you some bites that I have. Particularly of Nitish Kumar and Chandra Babu Naidu. What they said then and what they said now. And then I want you, Ajay Alok ji, to respond. Listen in. आज जिस तरह से वो बाकी सब के साथ कर रहे हैं हम तो अलग हो गए और आप जान लीजिए जीवन भर हम किसी भी तरह से उन लोगों के साथ फिर नहीं जाएंगे बिहार का तो तरक्की करेंगे ही देश के उत्थान के लिए भी हम लोग मिल करके काम करेंगे आप सबका सहयोग चाहिए हम आपको आश्वस्त करते हैं कि अब इधर उधर होने वाले नहीं है हम रहेंगे आप ही के साथ इसलिए अगर आप तेजी से यहाँ वाला काम सब हो जाए कि इस बार का जो चुनाव होने वाला है तो इस बार तक कम से कम 400 सौ सीट आप जीतिएगा ये हमको पूरा भरोसा इसीलिए बाकी सब लोग जो इधर उधर कर रहा कहीं कुछ नहीं होगा खूब आगे बढ़िएगा नरेंद्र मोदी करोड़ गट उग्रवादी मंचवाड़े को मेर ग नरेंद्र मोदी को ओटे चारा समस्या उसाई, गुर्ती चारा तमलो माइनॉरिटी सोधे लंद्रो, देश को सही समय में मोदी जी जैसा सही नेता मिला है, आपके पूरी कोशिशों में हम आपके साथ रहेंगे, ये हमारा वादा है। let me go straight across to Ajay Alok. Ajay Alok, these are of course two figures. I'll come to Raj Thakre also in a moment. But here are two leaders who were critical of your party. Till not long ago, you've embraced them. Raj Thakre also was critical of your party in 2019. You're embracing them. Explain this to us. To thus, to all of us who don't understand how politicians operate, please explain. What, what is the strategy here? Well, there is no strategy as such. I can see with the change of words from the leaders what we have shown right now, the anxiety level of Rajdeep is increasing. But I want an explanation. Explain what is the strategy of shopping okay, for okay, allies. Okay, are the yeah, allies giving, coming to you? I'm, you are I'm, going I'm, to them. I'm giving you. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm giving you an explanation. See, Rajdeep, uh, whenever we visit a tailor, Mm -hmm. Right. We are always confident and we have trust in that tailor that the tailor will stitch the suit very nicely. That mm -hmm. will fit you. So or, what you were saying that hunting for allies or uh, gathering allies. No, it's not. Alliance is always about stitching an alliance. Mm -hmm. And how this alliance stitches, it's always stitches when a tailor is very good and you have trust in that tailor. Mm -hmm. That yes, it's going to fit me and it's going to be perfect. The leadership of Narendra Modi is as such that it suits everyone. It's like 1 plus 1 becomes 11. So people have realized this and they are coming to us and we are open about it. We want to be perfect in every state. So if there is any possibility of an alliance which can help the NDA grow, the BJP grow and the ally grow, unlikely in our opposition where everybody is ready to eat the other person. They so, are it, not so it doesn't matter they what they've said about Mr. Signature. Modi in the past? That doesn't matter at all? Well, if they have said something about Mr. Modi in the past, they are regretting it and they are just changing their tunes. So should we uh, live in the past or should we live, to, live in today? Okay. That is the question. The, we are know, not into the legacy of Congress that we have to live for the last 60 years we have been in power. No. We have to create another 60 years for ourselves. Okay. And for that we need to be in power so that we can deliver to the people and we can win the trust of the people. Can I, and mark can my I words, one of the 40, 50 years belongs to BJP. Can I bring in Salman Sos on that point? Here is Ajay Alok saying, look, the BJP is flexible in a way. We are looking to the future. We are looking to the present. We are not worried about what, who said what in the past. We are looking to broaden our NDA Parivar. On the other hand, the India alliance seems to be constricting, if I may say so, uh, uh, Mr. Sos. Uh, Rajiv, uh, uh, this whole idea of stitching alliances just before elections and then having elections... I mean, this is an uh, old policy. The BJP, I mean, if you think about the allies that they've
Sir, you're mute. Sir, you're on mute. Mr. Soz, you're on mute. Sorry, sorry, Rajdeep. Yes. I was just saying that the BJP's the, the BJP's alliances just before the election, I think, is a sign that they really need some help because. If you remember, they can t keep talking about how they want to stitch alliances and create a suit boot ki sarkar, uh, stitch suits. But the fact of the matter is that if you look at their history, JNK, the People's Democratic Party, nowhere. Mm -hmm. Punjab, Shrimani, Akali Dal, nowhere. Haryana, JG, JJP. Maharashtra, Shiv Sena, they broke Shiv Sena. They went after NCP. Karnataka, JDS, they're having problems. They had problems in the past. Tamil Nadu, AIA, DMK. Andhra Pradesh, Jagat Reddy has been basically you know, uh, 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 totally uh, left on the sidelines, because even though Jagan Reddy helped uh, BJP consistently, but now they're with Chandra Babu Naidu in Bihar, sometimes with Dinti, sometimes with Chirag Paswan, sometimes with Pashupati uh, Paras, and all those things, they tell us, they tell the people of this country that the BJP's policy of divide and rule, that's what it is, divide and rule. Why? Because then they want to do hafta vasul. Divide and rule? Hafta Vasul. You're and saying it's divide, you know, you've given they, us a one-liner, divide and rule do, Hafta Vasul. Okay. They, they, and they, 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 and they, do, they do this through enforcing defections, ED, IT, including the tainted. They complain about people. They say they're corrupt. Then they bring them back in. Look at what they did with Ajit Pawar. Look at what they did with uh, uh, the chief minister of Assam. Then... Commit Brashtachar indiscriminately. CBI. This is what these people are. They talk about so many things, but the people of the country realize that they don't care about anybody. They don't care about any ally. They only care about power. That's all they care about. Okay. That is, they will do anything. They will take anybody. Mi they will become Mr. the dustbin of Mr. the country, Sos, but they you, will take anybody. Mr. Soz, you made your point. You made your point. I'm looking at the images at the moment of Amit Shah greeting Raj Thakre, and I want to come to you, Sanjay Kumar, because it's an interesting case study. Here is Raj Thakre. He has a limited vote bank. His highest vote bank has been about 4 to 5 percent. I'll come to you, Ajay Alok. Don't worry. It is 4 to 5 percent. And yet they are embracing someone like Raj Thakre, willing to forgive all that he has said about Prime Minister Modi and Amit Shah. Is it because Maharashtra is one of the few states where they are facing a real battle? Or is the BJP looking just to demolish the opposition at all stages? Is it a sign of nervousness? Or is it a sign of trying to totally dominate the, the politics of this country? Jisko aana hai, aa jai. Rajdeep. Uh, Rajdeep, in my opinion, it is certainly not a sign of nervousness. Mm -hmm. uh, but regarding Maharashtra, both the things. Maharashtra is a state which is heading for, I think, a keen contest. Mm -hmm. And BJP does not want to take any chance. So they are trying to rope in whosoever is willing to join the hands with NDA. And that is what BJP is trying to do, uh, inviting Raj Thakre to its fold. Or vice versa, Raj Thakre coming and meeting Amit Shah. Regarding the strategy of having an alliance in different states with smaller parties like Raj Thakre's party or uh, you know smaller parties in UP or in Bihar. I don't get this sense that this is a sign of nervousness. BJP is not confident of winning 2024 and that is why they are looking for alliances in different states. I think they want to demolish. They want to a narrative has been created by or a call has been given by Prime Minister himself that is part in so power for BJP mm -hmm. and for NDA char so power. So BJP on its own would find it extremely difficult to reach 370. But I think they're trying hard to take NDA closer to 400. And that is why if you have, you know, large number of alliance in different states, that still seems to be a possibility. So the aim is to widen your ally base. Uh, Ajay Alok, you wanted to come in when Salman Soz was speaking. I'll get you in a moment. But I want you to listen to what Raj Thakre said about Amit Shah not too long ago. Because I want to understand this kind of politics that is being practiced. Is it about Charsopar? Listen in first to what Raj Thakre had said about Amit Shah then. उन्होंने कहा कि अच्छे दिन की बात हमने कभी की ही नहीं थी अभी कर लो बात उन्हीं का एक मंत्री बोल रहा है कि अच्छे दिन की बात हमने कभी की ही नहीं थी वो सोशल नेटवर्क पे चल रहा था बोले तो इनके होर्डिंग्स क्या लगे थे तोमर तोमर कोई जी 
तोमर जी उनका ये स्टेटमेंट है अमित शाह अभी बोल रहे हैं कि पांच साल में अच्छे दिन नहीं आएंगे उसके लिए तो पच्चीस साल लगेंगे अरे पहले कहा आपने सौ दिन में अच्छे दिन लाएंगे अब बोल रहे हैं पच्चीस साल लगेंगे ये ना इसका मतलब ये आपने जो कैंपेन किया लोगों को बेवकूफ बनाया तो उसके ऊपर बात ना करें आप कहते हैं कि वो झूठों की पार्टी है किसकी बीजेपी ये झूठों की पार्टी है झूठ बोलने वालों की पार्टी बिल्कुल तो दिख ही रहा है You want to explain, therefore, that someone who uses strong words against you, you're embracing it. It's a sign of flexibility. Some will say, uh, uh, Ajay Alok. Others will say it's a sign of pure opp opportunism. What is it? I will neither call it opportunism nor I will say that we are too much tolerant. No, it's a change of their hearts. Why don't you understand? And if you keep on dwindling in the past, you won't be able to improve your present, and you cannot look into the future. Mm -hmm. And this is the problem with my friend Salman. He is not looking into the present. For the three minutes he spoke, he kept on speaking about BJP, but not a single word, a single line about the Congress Party. That what is happening to Congress? As a ruling party, we are worried about Congress Party. Nobody is ready to contest from their tickets. Tickets are being returned. I can name you the line of list of constituencies that they are not finding able to get candidates in UP. All 17 constituencies they'll have to take a loan from Samajwadi Party to contest. They don't have a candidate. I may be Lucknow, may be Varanasi, may be Amethi, Raiburi. Today we have seen Ahmedabad, Patna from where I come. They don't have a candidate. If this is the case with the Congress Party and Salman does not have a word for Congress Party, but he has all the thesis. And all the PSV done on the BJP that what BJP has done, how BJP is opportunistic, how BJP has utilized. Well, if you are if we are opportunistic, that's because we are in politics, okay. and politics is using opportunity, not wasting opportunity like what your leader does. Okay, that's you we know. We will use every opportunity. Can Why I, won't we? We are in the business of politics. We are twenty four seven into politics. Can I therefore turn from the past to the present, Salman Soz? Because I want to play what your friend Shashi Tharoor has said. Remember, Mr. Shashi Tharoor is called Dr. Shashi Tharoor, contesting from Tiruvannathapuram. The left, which is part of the India Alliance, is contesting against him. Listen into what Dr. Tharoor said today. Rahul Gandhi is the sitting MP in Vayanad. I am the sitting MP here. Last two elections. The BJP came second. If they are really so concerned about opposition unity, why are they undercutting my vote by running a candidate whose campaigning has been entirely against me? I have not heard the left speaking against the BJP. They are speaking against me all the time and trying to take away, uh, for example, minority votes, Muslim votes, and so on. This is a tactic which can only help the third party, namely the BJP. So I am asking the CPI. What are you talking about? Why are you doing this here and then demanding alliance, dharma, and why not? Be consistent. That's my message. That's that's the point, Salman. So the BJP is bolstering its ranks by adding allies. Whether you call it opportunism or not, you are divided house. The left and you are fighting each other bitterly in in uh, in Kerala. Trinamool Congress and you are fighting each other bitterly in Bengal. What's the message you are sending out? Well, well, well. Just because uh, uh, you you played uh, Shashi Tharoor's uh, uh, clip out there, let me just say, let me tell the country that Shashi Tharoor is going to be a four-time winner in Tiruvannathapuram, and he's going to win by a bigger margin than the last time. So we're not concerned about that seat at all. In, in fact, in Kerala, if I'm not mistaken, no matter what the left does, no matter what BJP does, uh, we are going to win. In my estimation, 15 seats. Like we did last time. No, no, but Ajay Alok so is I'm saying. Ajay Alok is saying in, there are different seats no, where no, no. Congress is not even getting candidates at no, the no, moment. No, wait, wait. no, 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 no Ajay, you Ajay, can't, Ajay, you can't Ajay, run Ajay, away Ajay, also Ajay, from that. Ajay Alok should worry about his own party. He, their, their party people in Delhi had to actually the former minister left politics. <laughs> I don't want BJP anymore. I don't want anything to do with politics anymore. That is the BJP. BJP is like I said. BJP's policy is about dividing India. <laughs> And they they don't care about what happens to India. But as far as the Congress Party is concerned, we have alliances, strong strong alliances in state after state, and we've already decided on our distributions. We have done that in Bihar. We have uh, we have an agreement. No, we, still we, have, we still don't no, know your UP no, list. We still don't know your UP list. We still don't know whether wait, Rahul Gandhi will contest wait, wait, from Amethi, Priyanka Gandhi, Barna from Raipur. There still wait. seems to be confusion.
No, no, no. The confusion, the confusion seems to be in the minds of the BJP and maybe to them in the media. As far as UP is concerned, there is already an agreement with the Samajwadi Party and allies of uh, uh, ours in, in that state that we could have a division of seats and we already know. So we are going to contest everywhere. They should worry about their, their selves. Now, let me just get to this charge so far, this charge of BC of, of the BJP. Listen, these guys, the BJP, they are not crossing 200 seats. They're having a hard time in this country to get to 200 seats. They're trying to create this whole hubba. Oh, we are, we are going to win 370 seats. We're going to win 400 seats. We're going to win 420 seats. They are not going to cross 200 seats because, <laughs> because, Rajdeep, mm -hmm. they have failed. The prime minister of this country failed to go to Manipur, a state that was burning, or has been burning, continues to burn for 10 months. The prime minister has not gone once for five minutes to wipe the tears of the faces of the women of Manipur. And they talk about Shakti. They mm -hmm. should be ashamed. They should be ashamed. I feel ashamed for them. Those, you know, they them. are the ones who talk about wait, wait, one more, one final point. Yes. They talk about <laughs> they talk about, you know, their governance, how they brought peace to my state, JNK, Jammu and Kashmir. In 10 years plus, there has not been an assembly election in Jammu and Kashmir. At the height of militancy, when thousands of people were dying, were getting killed in Jammu and Kashmir, we had elections to the assembly. What governance is this? Their failures, the people of this country know they have not been able to get the two crore jobs they promised. They do not do anything for the people. They are a suit put ki sarkar. That is why they're stitching these suits of 10 lakh rupees. This is again, this is again okay. a party of divide. And you you and made your point. Suit. Okay, you That's made your it. point. You made it strongly. Salman, I've listened to you. I know you're the angry young man, if I may call it at the moment. Sanjay Kumar. You heard Salman so saying that 400 par, all of this is a hava. Is it a hava somewhere? I mean, I know you've been saying consistently the BJP is going to win this election. You believe the BJP is well ahead. Could this be a bit of a hava, particularly because certain major states like Maharashtra, Bihar, Karnataka are states where the BJP is going to also find it tough to replicate 2019? Uh, Rajdeep, I would not go, I would not like to go state by state, but overall, yes, some of the state BJP will face a challenge, like Bihar, BJP, NDA already had 39 out of 40, it will not be easy for them to retain all the 39 seats or even score 40, but still, if I want to say something more about Bihar, but still I don't think that they are going to come down heavily, they might lose a couple of seats, yes. so yes, there are states which should be concerned for BJP, BJP is concerned, may be concerned about those states, but overall, nationally, we include South, East, West, North. Uh, do I get a sense that there is a hava in favor of BJP? I do get a sense that there is a strong hava, strong wind in favor of BJP. And my own sense is that whatever may come, BJP is certainly going to cross 300 mark. Okay. I don't think that BJP will come close to 370, but I think... In my opinion, BJP is heading for a slightly much bigger victory compared to what they managed to achieve in 2019. Let's leave it there uh, uh, at the moment. Lots of, yes, Ajay Alok, I, you know, if, if I don't give you the last word, you will say that you weren't, I wasn't being fair to you. So 30 seconds, a quick response. Yeah, I just said, I just want to say that Salman again kept on speaking about BJP, but nothing about, about Congress. That means, uh, and the theatrics could help Congress it would have, but I think Congress is going into hibernation. Very soon we are going to see that Congress after election will go into okay. hibernation, that's for sure. And let me remind you one thing, Rajdeep. Raj Thakre coming to our foray mm -hmm. is going to be a big challenge for Udav Thakre because the real heritage of Bal Thakre is now will be reflected in Raj Thakre. The core Hindutva vote, what Udav has ditched, will be in front of people of Maharashtra for everyone to see. Okay. And there will be a tectonic shift okay. in what you say. You, your 30 seconds up. Sena. Your 30 seconds up. Now 30 seconds to Salman Soz who's laughing away. You know, uh, this whole idea that Raj Thakre, uh, who's by you played earlier, is going to suddenly become uh, uh, Bal Thakre's successor. 
this is all you know bjp basically trying to tell the people of maharashtra that you know we have an alternative they keep trying to come up with there's shinde now there's somebody else and ajit pawar and now it's going to be all of these people get to whatever they want they're not i can tell you this rashti in maharashtra in maharashtra <laughs> our alliance the india alliance is going to get more seats than the nda Okay, let, let me leave it there. Let me leave it there. Both of you are throwing numbers at me. The Supreme Court took up all the 200 odd petitions demanding a stay on the implementation of the Citizenship Amendment Act. The center has sought time from the court to file a reply to the petitions. The bench led by Chief Justice Chandrachud has granted the center three weeks time. The court, which will take up the matter next on April 9, did not order though an interim stay on the CAN rules notified recently by the center. Remember, more than 200 petitions have been filed linked to the CA, which was first enacted four years ago. Now, one of the key petitioners is Mr. Kunaili Kutti. The Indian Union Muslim League MP and leader is joining me at the moment, uh, deputy leader in Kerala. Appreciate Mr. Kunaili Kutti, you joining me. Your party, you have gone to the Supreme Court asking for a stay on the CA notifications. On what grounds are you seeking this stay when the centre has already passed the law in both houses of parliament? Well, after they passed the bill, we had moved in the court some four years back. Mm -hmm. And in that case, uh, all the petitions uh, uh, came before the Supreme Court and ours was the lead petition. In that petition, the government had stated that the government uh, is not intending to implement it now. That's why they are not bringing out the rules for the time being. On that basis, it was kept pending. But the, uh, that is the impression the uh, government gave to the Honorable Supreme Court. And without informing Supreme Court, without arguing the case, without going into the merit of anything, they are just ignoring the uh, Honorable Supreme Court and implementing it now. But isn't it the right of the government here to frame the rules, the prerogative of the government? Once the laws are passed, the government frames the rules, uh, Mr. Kunali Kutti. No, that is that, that is true. Uh, they had uh, their affidavit is set, uh, set in the Supreme Court. Uh, it, won't, uh, it, it, it will be brought before the Honorable Supreme Court. We are there. We are, our petition is there. We should be heard. Because they, 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 they had given a statement like that. For cases before the Supreme Court. Well, what is your principal argument, if I may ask Mr. Kunalikuti, against the CA, the new citizenship law? Where is your principal argument? It is, it, it is discriminatory, definitely. Uh, citizenship should be given on the basis of its merit, not on caste or uh, religion basis. That is, that is the main argument. That is the main argument. There are other technicalities for us, our. Uh, petition at present. There are other technicalities, like it has to be placed before uh, Parliament and all that. There will be those though who will say, Mr. Kunali Kutti, what all this politics playing out is over CA will only widen Hindu-Muslim divides uh, before the election. That those opposing the law will be seen to stoking fears among the minorities when the fears don't exist. This is not a law that is going to exclude anyone. While a uh, law is uh, uh, framed, uh, passed by parliament on the basis of uh, religious discrimination, uh, how will not be there a fear in the mind of the concerned uh, uh, community? Definitely there will be. A particular community will not be given. That is, uh, that, that is, the, that is the law. Uh, definitely, it will have uh, it will create a fear complex in the mind of the uh, uh, concerned community, and it is against the principle of uh, uh, secularism also. Uh, citizenship on the basis of religion or caste is is that right? It is not right at all. I'm going to ask you one final question, Mr. Kunalikutti. Do you believe elections are coming up now in a few weeks? Will the CA notification, Mr. Kunalikutti, be a major election issue? Or do you believe that it's not going to play out anymore on the election front? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what, that's what uh, everybody went uh, with the LDL. People are going ahead with their democratic right, the election. Uh, days before that, uh, all of a sudden, government of India brings such a law. Is it right? 
that's what we are going to question mm -hmm. in the in the uh, court okay yeah, our conscience, see, see, the main question is that our constitution should be protected. Constitution always said that there will not be any discrimination to any particular community. This is a clear discrimination against the one community. How far it will go now and how far it will go tomorrow, that is another question. Uh, it is not, uh, based on principle itself, it is not right. We are questioning it on that basis. Okay, let, uh, Mr. Kunalikutti, appreciate you, you joining us here on the show tonight. Let's turn from there uh, to our feature story tonight. And it's about a man who's been making the headlines for the last few days, ever since the electoral bonds controversy broke. There is one company that has emerged the largest electoral bond contributor, Future Gaming and Hotel Services, owned by Chennai-based or Tamil Nadu-based lottery kingpin, Santiago Martin. Martin's company purchased bonds worth rupees 1,368 crore rupees since 12th April 2019. The question being asked, who really is Santiago Martin? What are his political connections? Tonight, we tell you that story. Take a look. Santiago Martin, popularly known as the Lottery King. The owner of Future Gaming and Hotel Services Private Limited that runs lotteries in many states has emerged the number one contributor to political parties through electoral bonds. Martin's company purchased bonds worth 1,368 crore rupees since the 12th of April 2019. The king of lottery had very humble beginnings. Martin's rise started from his return from Myanmar. He settled in Coimbatore and ventured into the lottery business. As it turned out, Martin has the golden touch. By the 90s, he became the top player in Tamil Nadu. But in 2003, then Chief Minister J. Jailalitha banned lotteries in the state, claiming addiction to lottery tickets was destroying the lives of the poor. Santiago then shifted his focus to other states. Controversies haunted him. Martin hit the headlines after he gave two crore rupees to the CPM's mouthpiece, Desha Bhimani in Kerala. Then Chief Minister V.S. Achutanandan criticized the Pinarai faction over the issue, forcing the newspaper to return the money. In 2011, Martin had produced a film whose screenwriter was former Chief Minister M. Karunanadi. Later that same year, Martin was arrested over land-grabbing charges. He spent eight months behind bars. Martin is currently being investigated by the Enforcement Directorate for alleged money laundering. Assets worth crores linked to Santiago Martin have been seized. The electoral bond disclosures have once again put the spotlight on Santiago Martin. While the DMK has revealed it got 509 crore rupees from Martin, the question now is who else benefited from the Lottery King's donations? As the Election Commission released data on electoral bonds, all eyes fell upon one man from Tamil Nadu, a resident of Coimbatore, called as Lottery King. Though his beginning was humble, his rise was massive, nothing short of a tsunami wave. Santiago Martin bought more than 1,300 crores worth electoral bonds and he was able to donate them to several parties. Divyan, Pramod Madhav, for this day. 2023 has now been officially declared the hottest year on record. A new report released today from the World Meteorological Organization shows that records have once again been broken on temperatures, throwing light on the alarming situation of climate change. The climate change has resulted in ocean heat, sea level rise, Antarctic sea loss, glacier heat. The report has also highlighted how extreme weather conditions have undermined socio-economic development across the world, including here in India. And joining me now is Professor Krishna Achuta Rao, lead author of the recently released Intergovernmental Panel Report, former head of the Center for Atmospheric Sciences at IIT Delhi. Appreciate your joining us, uh, Professor Rao. Uh, I just want Thank to you. understand from you that the new report from the World Met Organization confirming that 2023 was the hottest year on record global average near surface temperature at 1.45 Celsius. Is this a red alert to the world that the world is such getting hotter and caught up in the worries of climate change? Absolutely. This has uh, been coming gradually. It's been creeping up on us. But this last year has just been a, 
a tremendous increase in global average temperatures. Mm -hmm. And this is, we have been reporting this in report after report mm -hmm. uh, from the IPCC, but what happened in 2023 has just been alarming. And this is indeed a red alert for all of us. What explains it? Do you want to give us a sense as to what explains what's happening across the world, these rising temperatures? Do you believe it's going to get worse in the years ahead now? I do believe that it is going to get worse in mm -hmm. the coming years. Mm -hmm. And the reason for uh, the, the increases that we've been seeing and the in increasingly rapid changes in our climate has been our continued emissions of uh, greenhouse gases, primarily from burning fossil fuels mm -hmm. and other greenhouse gases from uh, methane to nitrous oxide. These are a consequence of our continued use of uh, fossil fuels and uh, not having enough renewable in our mix of energy. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the continued industrialization and uh, growth that we've seen over the last 50, 60 years mm -hmm. has is catching up with us. And as we go forward, mm -hmm. unless we take rapid steps to decrease our emissions and bring it back to a level that the natural systems can take up what we emit, mm -hmm. this temperature change is going to keep happening and we will see worse yet. But uh, uh, Professor Rao, this is presumably not just an India problem, but a global problem. And therefore, you can't just single out India. This is a problem that the Western world in particular has also got to address. Uh, India says, in fact, it should start from the Western world uh, when it comes to control on emissions. So what's your sense? Uh, uh, do you get a feeling that the world is ready uh, to, uh, to embrace this uh, climate action plan for the future? Uh, we've been hoping that the world gets ready. It's been uh, more than 30 years of warnings from scientists. Mm -hmm. And it appears that the world is yet to take this seriously enough. Mm -hmm. And I think this is uh, this recent report that has just come out today from the WMO is a wake-up call. Because what this report also points out is that, you know, there's a do nothing and there are costs with doing nothing mm -hmm. things that are going to happen damages that are going to occur losses that are going to happen if we do nothing those costs mm -hmm. are much much higher than the cost of taking action that is something that people governments across the world have to realize that they cannot keep pointing fingers at you first and I'll follow you mm -hmm. because this is something, as you rightly said, is a collective. Mm -hmm. We are all in this climate boat together. What happens in another country mm -hmm. affects us. What happens to us affects everybody. Mm -hmm. So in this regard, mm -hmm. I do understand that the Western countries have had the lion's share of emission and therefore a mm -hmm. lion's share of the responsibility to fix our climate. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that we can just sit back and look at their uh, actions and say, you're not doing enough. What? We also have to do our bit. What is that bit? Where do, you, where do we start? If we assume, as you say, that we are now going to see hotter and hotter summers, uh, temperatures rising even further and the enormous damage that can cause to our socio-economic development. Where do we start this debate as far as India is concerned on climate change? India is already doing some of the things that are necessary. Mm -hmm. The in, uh, uh, enormous attention being paid to renewable energy in India, whether it is wind or solar, is indeed one of the key things that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Now, whether that alone is sufficient, whether we can continue to use coal and other fossil fuels while also growing our renewable sources of energy, this is where there is a very tight rope that needs to be walked. Mm -hmm. This has implications for our development, mm -hmm. but at the same time, what we have to understand is our own actions, if we delay, 
the damages that we are inflicting on, on ourselves mm -hmm. is going to start mattering. And I think um, globally, mm -hmm. every country and India need to step up their game and go yeah. towards a more carbon-free world. Uh, may, may, I, may I ask you in conclusion, as you said, there's a red alert that has been sounded by the World Meteorological Organization. In the Indian context, is there any particular region that should be very worried about it? Because we've seen in the last year, uh, during the monsoons, the kind of rains that uh, the Himalayan belt experienced, the flooding, the landslides. We've seen previously uh, cyclonic conditions only intensifying both on the west and east coast of the country. Is there any particular region that should be worried about the manner in which now uh, uh, this report signals this red alert? I think we need to be worried for almost all of India. There are different hazards that we uh, are um, experiencing, whether you're on the east coast or the west coast, as you mentioned, the tropical cyclones mm -hmm. inflict a lot of damage. In the Himalayan zone, we have heavy rainfall that results in uh, landslides mm -hmm. and other damages. We have glaciers that are melting and melting faster and possibly culpable in damaging some of our infrastructure in mm -hmm. the in the Himalayas. Mm -hmm. And in the plains, we just two years ago, we experienced one of the earliest heat waves, and that had a tremendous effect on our agriculture. Mm -hmm. So I don't think any part of India is going to be immune from it. Mm -hmm. Each one of our economic sectors, each mm -hmm. one of our geographical regions is vulnerable. And these vulnerabilities are what we need to take uh, cognizance of and take steps to make them more resilient. Professor Rao, for giving us a sense of what really this report suggests for flagging of some of those key areas of concern, I appreciate you joining me here on the news today. Thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. And let's stay with the world of uh, in the environment as our Get Real India story because Bihar's Begu Sarai has emerged as the world's most polluted metropolitan area as per a new report on pollution. The robust database hints at the global scale of air pollution affecting billions of lives. Begu Sarai in Bihar, unfortunately, has a dubious distinction now. Take a look. The world's most polluted metropolitan area is in India, and it is not Delhi. The 6th Annual World Air Quality Report has identified Bihar's Begusarai as the most polluted metropolitan area in 2023. According to the report, the subcontinent is among the most polluted regions. Bangladesh ranked number one followed by Pakistan and India ranked number third in the list. Pollution in Bangladesh was found to be 15 times higher than the WHO PM 2.5 annual guideline. In Pakistan, it was 14 times higher, while in India, pollution was 10 times higher than the WHO limit. Fourth in the list is Tajikistan with 9 times higher numbers. Begusarai in India was most polluted metropolitan area. Apart from that, the fact is that according to this report, the world air quality, these uh, countries are not just the only one that are ranking uh, in the top list. India is still not in the top list of countries. A major cause of concern because more and more cities are now being added to the air quality monitoring grid. And, mm. I, and that's a very good thing that now we are getting the data. The report highlights the critical need for sustainable practices, cleaner energy sources and stricter environmental regulations to mitigate the adverse effect of air pollution on human health and the environment. With Milan Sharma, Bureau Report, India Today. Let's leave you though with some good news today. We introduce you as we leave the show to 54 year old Sanjeev Goel retired from the Indian Air Force but six years ago lost both his legs in a road accident how is he then showing the way forward despite having his legs amputated here is a great example for thousands 
of resilience. Thanks for watching. Stay well, stay safe. Good night, Shubhratri. Jai Hind. Namaskar. Sanjeev Goyal, a retired IAF officer, lost his leg six years ago in a road accident. Goyal underwent 25 surgeries over two months. His legs had to be amputated. Goyal, however, never wallowed in self-pity. He manages his daily work on his own, setting an example for everyone. He even completed 5 km marathons in Dehradun and Chandigarh in his wheelchair. हर इंसान का एक अपना जीवन का साधारण था कि मैं भी साधारण जीवन तो जीऊं अपना कम से कम तो मेरे को पहले पता नहीं था कि मैराथन में भी हैंडीकैप्स भी अलाउ रहते हैं गया उसके बाद वहां से आगे सहयोग में मिला वो अच्छा लगा मेरे को The 54 year old is also involved in social service ब्लड डोनेशन का काम करता हूं मैं ब्लड डोनेट भी करता हूं ब्लड डोनेशन भी करवाता हूं लोगों को और फिर दूसरे भी बहुत सारे एनजीओज वगैरह और उसके माध्यम से मैं कोशिश रहती है कि लोगों का सहयोग करूं गोयल सेज ही गेट्स इनवाइटेड टू पब्लिक इवेंट्स व्हिच ही फाइंड्स मोटिवेटिंग सपोर्ट तो मेरे को हमारी पूरी टीम से सब पूरा बराबर मिलता है ऑल ओवर इंडिया में जगह जगह पे हमारे कार्यक्रम होते हैं और भी जगह जगह बुलाया जाता है सम्मानित किया जाता है बड़ा अच्छा लगता है डिस्पाइट हिज स्ट्रगल्स ही कीप्स अ पॉजिटिव आउटलुक टुवर्ड्स लाइफ परेशानियों और मुसीबतों के बाद मैं ओवरकम करके आया अब भगवान ने बचाया है तो कुछ सोच के ही बचाया होगा जी ऊपर वाला कुछ करता है तो कुछ अच्छे के लिए ही करता है शायद उन्होंने मेरे को चुना होगा कि आगे मैं कुछ समाज सेवा का कार्य करता With Lalit Sharma, Bureau Report, India Today.